In our last video, we took a look at the laws of supply and demand and used them to come up with these two charts, these two supply curves and demand curves. In today's video, we're going to take a look at what happens when you play some magic and put those two charts together. Hello everybody, welcome to today's world history video. Today we're going to take a look at what happens when you put the supply curve right next to the demand curve. It lets you do some pretty cool things. Here we've got our demand curve that we came up with. If you remember, uh, when, we, when we got the price at a dollar, uh, people are willing to buy a lot of something, whether it's Brussels sprouts or candy or whatever. And then over here, as the price goes up, less and less people are willing to purchase uh, that good. Now, if we take a look at our demand curve, it looks different. As the price goes up, people are willing to make more and more of that product. So in our last video, we talked about Brussels sprouts. At $1, farmers are willing to put a little bit of production into growing Brussels sprouts, but at $4 a pound, at $4 a pound, they're willing to make a lot of Brussels sprouts. So here we've got our demand and supply curves. And when we put them on the same chart, we're able to use that chart to take a look at some really interesting things. So let's say that Brussels sprouts are put on the market for a dollar. Stores charge a dollar per pound for Brussels sprouts. Well, we can see at that level uh, right here, uh, farmers are willing to produce a thousand pounds of Brussels sprouts. But uh, there's a demand, people are demanding 4,000 pounds of Brussels sprouts. So what we have here is a difference, and we've got a shortage in this case. We've got uh, 4,000 pounds desired or demanded by the public and only 1,000 being produced. So you've got a shortage of Brussels sprouts. Now when you've got a shortage, uh, stores are start to think, well, you know what, maybe I should up the price. So let's take a look at what happens on this graph when stores decide to up that price by quite a bit and up it to four dollars well in this case we've got the opposite problem uh, at this case you see the demand here people are only willing to purchase a thousand pounds of brussels sprouts uh, but farmers got really excited about the four dollar price tag and produced four thousand pounds of brussels sprouts so in this case we end up with a surplus. We end up with more Brussels sprouts than we needed. In fact, we ended up with about 3,000 pounds too many. So to get rid of those extra Brussels sprouts, stores are going to want to decrease the price. So over time, through uh, stores raising and lowering their prices on things, hopefully you end up with this point right here. Um, and where these where these two lines intersect, where these supply and demand intersect, this is where you've got the supply equal to the demand. So the number of goods produced, or, or the number of Brussels sprouts that are grown, equal the number of Brussels sprouts that are purchased. And if we take a look here, you can see that that ends up right around 2,500 pounds here. Uh, so this is where 2,500 pounds of Brussels sprouts are both grown and purchased. And we see that that happens at the price tag of about $2.50. And you can see we call this point, this point where the same number of uh, products are made as bought, uh, equilibrium. Equilibrium is where the supply equals the demand. And you can see that on this chart right here. Were you paying attention? Answer the next couple of questions to find out. Why is a shortage bad for stores and people who want to buy something? Why would stores want to avoid a surplus? How would you explain equilibrium to a third grader. 